station by Lee Young Lee takes place in a metaphorical train station in which Lee Young Lee sort of explains the uh, different paths that one must take in life, how potentially they are predetermined by some omnipre omnipotent present, uh, presence, but the, you, people have the ability to find themselves and specifically find joy and discover who they are. Throughout the a poem. He used the symbol of trains to show these different paths, a motif of sort of time and how it changes throughout, and a re the repetition along with uh, genius poetry to sort of explain these themes. In terms of my takeaway, the uh, first time I read it, I was incredibly confused, but as I read it over and over again, it came to become my favorite Lee Young Lee poem because I was able to garner an appreciation for the sort of message that was shared along with the genius way that he sort of crafted that message. So starting at the top, he explains sort of an introduction to a train system it's, it's a station. It seems incredibly realistic. We have sort of the announcement of your attention, please, which is symbolically significant because it might sort of be uh, the indication of a omnipotent pre uh, or uh, omniscient uh, God or presence that predetermines things. Yet we have it's also something that would certainly be announced at a train station, sort of train number nine, incredibly realistic. The northern Zephyr is a common name. For a train and it's destined for River's End, which could be a place. But this obviously has uh, significance in terms of its meaning because River's End is sort of uh, is dark, has negative connotation, seems as if the end is in, in sight. And sort of all ticketed passengers has a sort of it hints of predetermined uh, nature, it's prefigured, and sort of the gate marked evening implies that this could potentially be the train for uh, death. And I think that in terms of external structure, it's interesting that he starts with uh, this train, and I think the reason why he does that is because this is the train that everyone must eventually aboard, even though there are variations throughout the life. Train number nine is the one that everyone has to end with, so Lee Young Lee figures he'll start with that one. So the next stanza is the single best stanza that Lee Young Lee ever writes, in my opinion. So uh, he sort of, I, there's a repetition of your attention, please, which sort of shows how there are various trains taking off at different times, shows how people sort of have variations throughout their lives. So train number seven is leaves blown by. That sort of indicates sort of missed, opera is a metaphor for missed opportunities that people have throughout their lives and sort of bound for the color of thinking, I think, is about how they should invoke sort of color or emotion in previous, or they wish that they, and they think about changing the way that their life is operated and this sort of uh, dovetails with renovated time as they sort of want to redo their past. And so this part is so genius where he says is now departing because if you look to stanza one, it says the, the northern zephyr is now boarding. All ticketed passengers, please proceed to the gate. This one says a uh, leave train number seven leave blows by is now departing. All ticket passengers may board. I think what he's trying to say here is that similar to how these people live their life through regret and missed opportunities, this train has also already left and therefore they do not have the opportunity uh, to sort of uh, leave and sort of the gate where they are supposed to board behind my eyes shows that it's sort of their brain. The only thing that they can do is necessarily think about their past and think about sort of how they wish that they could change it. Now, the next stanza, once again, we have this uh, repetition of your attention and train number four is the 20th century. This sort of, I think it's talking about 1900s people facing discrimination, whether it be women, whether it be uh, immigrants or people from other countries, anyone who lacked rights. I think the wind undisguised is sort of talking about religion, the breath of God, sort of the presence of of a religious figure, religious icons, and what it's showing is that these sort of have combined to be recognized and accepted within society, whether it be through legislation or whether it be through social uh, progress. When he talks about those who have had their names at the, un at the margin are people who have been discriminated throughout history or uh, have to consult the ivy. I think the symbol of ivy is incredibly important because ivy as a plant is very strong and it grows in the hardest of environments and I think that that's a metaphor for these sort of the, the 20th century in terms of the people facing discrimination thriving in sort of the harvest hardest environments and sort of I think that when he says uh, at an open window I think that that's the possibility of creating new opportunities. So the next stanza 
goes into another train, another path that people might follow. This one is music and sort of arrives out of hidden ground. I think that this train symbolizes happiness, serenity, uh, relaxation. I think when it's arriving out of hidden ground means that it's sort of unpredictable. It's out of nowhere. These endless beginnings and sort of flower and fruit, the diction that he uses here, um, you know, besides from the alliteration, it's very happy, cheer, fr flower, fruit, positive, sort of growth. And I think that when he says it's more ancient than uh, grandma's hair is sort of a concept that happiness has been along around for a very long time. So he indicates that the passengers for this uh, memories of the sea, I think the memories of the sea is metaphor for people who have had adventures, they've had a travel, or they've been able to take risks throughout their lives. And I think that the sort of rhetoric of saying they may be bored leisurely implies that they've been living their life to the fullest in terms of stopping to smell the roses and taking advantage of everything that life might happen uh, that might offer. Tip this kind of dovetails with the idea of an unmarked uh, gate. Then sort of the uh, next line is sort of different as these are fateful members of the foam. These are not these sort of people who have memories of the sea. They got close, but it's just not there. The foam is at sort of the shore and they never put themselves out there and therefore they have to sort of board at a specific gate and that one marked uh, Zelia. Now we have sort of a next, the next um, uh, stanza, we have another announcement and sort of under falling pe petals never think about home he's sort of saying that even if things are going bad or not going too great you shouldn't look back you shouldn't stop to think you should just continue living he says that seeing begins in the dark is sort of a metaphor for how life starts when you start taking risks you start being courageous you start being a risk taker and when he says listening stills us i think this is important for a couple reasons one is that just always waiting back means that you're never going to be able to have any sort of joy or action within your life, but I think when he says us, it means that he might be a part of this group, those who don't necessarily take all of those risks, those who uh, don't necessarily, uh, or those who have sort of regrets about their sort of previous self. This is coupled with the idea that yesterday has gone ahead to to meet you, is that other people are going to take advantage of those opportunities that you necessarily leave behind. Um, then the next stanza talks about uh, it goes to sort of a scene that could occur within a train station is about a man reading a book and this metaphor is important because it sort of shows how when he stops reading that's a metaphorical for him sort of pausing in life but life continues on the girl still escapes and the same thing with the boy who disappears he is sort of taking advantage of the opportunities that he has uh, within life and I think this is particularly important because it shows that not everything is predetermined as evidenced by his saying that the face behind the clock is not his father's face and it's not his mother hands which means that time is particularly yours to use it and that we should take advantage of everything that happens now the uh, next stanza where he talks about light bearing tears or sort of the happy tears and the accomplished line is success in life is that that or is something that uh, one can do and it sort of couples with the idea of this next train the train 66 the uninvited song and sort of the full quiet heart I think is those who are necessarily at peace and when it says it takes no passengers I think this is important because it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any people on it but that it's not going to be there's no handouts is that people have to seek their happiness they have to seek their fulfillment so when he says leave your baggage with the attendant at your name spring from hiding I think that's a metaphor for how it happens sort of unpredictably but everyone has the ability there everyone has sort of that uh, their name. It's just waiting for them to to get it. Now, the intrepid, uh, intrep uh, intrepid perfume that he talks about is, I think, uh, an out and a metaphor for a fearless aura that people have. Whether your perfume might be the sort of sense that you have, the behavior that you have, the courage that you have, and he's saying that 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 is what's necessarily important. And when he ends the poem by saying that you may end bored at either end of childhood, he's explaining how. Throughout your life, you will have opportunities to sort of engage in these acts of refuge, acts of happiness, and always, you should always try to take advantage of those opportunities when you get it.